So of course, all respect to every single NBA team, but I think our NBA Finals this season is once again going to be the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors. And one of these teams Twitter is going to love and the other one they're going to hate because of the Kevin Durant signing and everybody doesn't like Steph Curry anymore. I don't know what I'm talking about. But what I do want to talk about is if I can do an entire year preview because I already talked about the regular season and the standings, who's going to win this NBA Finals between the Cavaliers and the Warriors, which we assume is what it's going to be? Well, immediately, if we look back at the previous series, the the way the Cavaliers came back from a 3-1 deficit was they kind of nullified all the things that Golden State's good at because the Warriors are great at switching on everything because they have multiple guys who can defend multiple positions. So if you want to run off-ball stuff, off-ball screens, off-ball cuts, they can just switch and you're usually stuck with about like 7 or 8 seconds left on the shot clock with not much to do. The Cavaliers stopped that by just kind of running isolations with Kyrie Irving and LeBron James. And Kyrie and LeBron were incredible. LeBron put on perhaps the best performance in the history of the NBA. And Kyrie was fantastic as well. I mean, you, you can't switch on an isolation. And if the Cavaliers ever wanted to get more complex, they would just run a pick and roll. But they would run it with whoever Curry was defending. So it's like if Steph was on Shumpert, alright, screw it, Shump, you're the one setting the screen. They forced Curry to play defense. They tired him out. And it was effective because Curry was not very good the last couple games in that NBA Finals. He also, for some reason, the, the, the stupid step back against Kevin Love, I don't know, man. I don't know what the hell you were doing there, Curry. But the Cavaliers also stepped up on the other side of the floor as well, as whenever Golden State wanted to run their off-ball stuff with Clay and Steph running across screens and Draymond having the ball in the post, being able to look out on the floor and dish it to the open guy and all that stuff, they just bodied him up. They bodied up Steph Curry, they bodied up Clay Thompson, they put an elbow into him at all times, and in the playoffs, and especially in the NBA Finals, you are allowed to do that. And the Cavaliers, they just roughed them up and Golden State couldn't handle it. And I think where the Warriors really lost the series was they didn't make the adjustments to say, all right, this isn't working anymore, let's do something else. I actually wanted Golden State to run some isolations, like see if Kyrie can defend Steph one-on-one. -on -one. Like you're constantly having Steph coming off of screens and the Cavaliers are just bodying him up and they're just switching all the time. Just run an ISO and see if Kyrie can defend him. They also played Anderson Vergeau like five minutes. But now with the addition of Kevin Durant, the new dynamic that gets added to the Warriors, besides the fact of like, he can also be someone who can play off ball and set off ball screens and stuff like that, is he's probably like the second best isolation player in the NBA behind LeBron James. So now with Durant, I'm looking to see if the Warriors... In a situation like the NBA Finals where the off-ball stuff and the, if we can be honest, the quote-unquote cute stuff, it's just not as effective. Kevin Durant, with his height and his ability to just score over everybody, that's going to create a new dynamic that the Cavaliers are going to have to defend. And I definitely think LeBron James is someone who can defend Kevin Durant. And I think he's going to have to because I think the Warriors will go to him in isolations and post-up opportunities a bit more because, like I mentioned, the, the, the running around the court stuff, it just wasn't working towards the end of the series for them. But at the same time, the addition of Kevin Durant to this Warriors team could create an offense that we've just never seen before. I mean, it probably will. And the Cavaliers might have to make some additions if, like, 30 games into the season, we realize that the Warriors are just an animal that we didn't think was imaginable which is definitely possible with the amount of talent on this roster and the amount of shooting. That was a voice crack. I'm not going to edit that one out. The hell was I talking about? Oh yeah, they might have to trade Kevin Love. Look, Kevin Love in the series against the Warriors, he averaged 7 points and 6 rebounds. He was basically a non-factor. He did grab 14 rebounds in the last game, so shout out to him for that one, but... If they could move Kevin Love for an athlete or a set of athletes who can play defense and move around the floor more, it might be the way to go. If this was the same Warriors team, I would say you don't need to because you already beat them once, but they added Kevin frickin' Durant. 
it might just force you to do something. But then at the same time, one weakness for this Golden State team is going to be rebounding up front. I mean, shout out to Draymond, but he's definitely liable to allow some offensive rebounds. And Zaza's tough as hell, but I think they're still vulnerable on the boards. Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love can be perhaps the best offensive rebounding front court in the NBA. And that alone might be valuable enough to where you keep Kevin Love. But there's no doubt about it, he was not good in the finals. And they really didn't need him. And now that they added Kevin Durant, you might have to trade him for some wing defenders or athletes or whatever. But we also need to talk about the potential loss of J.R. Smith. It's potential. If he wants to come back, there's a little bit of a contract dispute. His shooting is very effective for them. I mean, in game six against Golden State, he was four for ten from three. He's a guy you have to defend, and when you have a sharpshooter on the floor with ISO-heavy players like Kyrie Irving as well as LeBron James, he's very effective. And if he's gone, your starting two guard might be Mike Dunleavy, who, to be fair, is also a good shooter, but he's not the athlete that J.R. Smith is. And J.R. Smith is not like some crazy athlete, but he's definitely better than Dunleavy. He's also a bit of a better defender than Dunleavy because J.R. was actually playing some good team defense towards the end of the series. I mean, the Cavaliers as a whole were playing great defense the way they were switching on everything. So if J.R. Smith's gone, you're looking at Dunleavy or you're looking at Amon Shumpert. And Shumpert, from an offensive standpoint, has pretty much fallen off a cliff. I mean, he showed some life early on in his career with the Knicks. He's a defender and he's an athlete, but he is a guy who, a lot of the time, the other team can just not pay attention to. Now, maybe he could become a shooter for them, and if that's the case, then fantastic. But if he's going to continue with what he's been over his career, that's a spot on the roster that you might have to address before you go up against a team that was really good, and then they added Kevin frickin' Durant. Now, I can say about Shumpert, he did hit one huge three-pointer in Game 7 against the Warriors, and that is a good sign, but his career has been trending, and hopefully he can break out of it. Or they can just re-sign J.R. Smith and then it's all good. But even with all these changes that the Cavaliers could go through, the LeBron James factor cannot be measured. I mean, I kind of feel like the dude's not human at this point after the performance he put on against them this previous finals. And hell, even the one two years ago when he didn't have Kyrie or Kevin Love and he forced him to a game six. Like, LeBron James is ridiculous. And I don't know if there's anything that would be in front of him that he wouldn't be able to make an interesting series, if I can use English correctly. Because his ability to just beat somebody off a dribble, get inside, force you to foul him, or just finish anyway, or kick out to an open shooter, like, it's just ridiculous. And then you add in Kyrie Irving to that, who was also incredible against the Warriors. It's like, that right there could be enough to where... The addition of Durant is not enough. But now if I can go back to the Warriors for a second, remember when Harrison Barnes was a complete non-factor and that was a huge reason why they lost that series because the Cavaliers just left him open all the damn time? You really can't do that now because, well, Durant's going to be in that spot. And unless the Cavaliers can reinvent the way we know NBA defenses, eventually you got to sag off a of one guy. And I don't know who the hell you do it to on this Warriors team. But again, they did a fantastic job of defending them last season. So even if they managed to do a great job again, there is still the factor of Kevin Durant's an isolation monster who can post up, he can hit the turnaround jumper. Like LeBron James, he can also beat almost anybody off a dribble, get inside, force himself to be fouled. It's going to create a new thing for the Warriors and similar to how the Cavaliers did it a season ago where they kind of stopped the Warriors ability to switch and everything by just killing them in isolation the Warriors are going to be able to do that now too with Durant if hopefully they recognize that the off ball stuff is not working and they go to a more simple offense but then again Steve Kerr might not do it and he also might put in Anderson Varejao again is Varejao even on the team anymore I don't know so I guess to sum this thing up, am I favoring the Warriors over the Cavaliers in the seven game series? Yes, I definitely am. Because what was already a great team 
that lost to the Cavaliers by four points in a seven-game series, which required an all-time performance from both LeBron James and Kyrie Irving to happen, just added Kevin frickin' Durant. Which, besides just putting a bunch of great players together, they also got a guy who fixes one of the problems they had, which was... They didn't have someone who could post up all the time. They didn't have someone who could just be an isolation monster, although I think Curry can be. They just don't go to it a lot. So I think for the Cavaliers to perhaps get to that point, to be fair, they might already be there because LeBron James might just be a robot. But I think there are some things the Cavs could do. They might need to trade Kevin Love for some more defenders because, again, he really wasn't good in the finals. I know they won the thing, but... Well, drastic times call for drastic measures. And hopefully they can re-sign J.R. Smith. And, um, I mean, I just want the season to start already. I want to see this finals. Of course, this is all barring injury and things like that. But I definitely favor the Warriors, but I think the Cavaliers might need to make a few changes. And it's going to do it.